Hello class, welcome to the final segment in the second lecture. And in this final segment, we'll take a look at an exercise that will check your understanding on the pressure gradient force. And uh, also, hopefully you remember something about uh, the kinematic equations from physics. So that may or may not be a helpful hint as you tackle this problem. But in this exercise, I'll just go ahead and read it out to you. Consider a 1,005 millibar low that is situated 500 kilometers to the west of a 1015 millibar high. An air parcel with a density of one kilogram per cubic meter is initially at rest and situated at the center of the high. Assuming that only the pressure gradient force is acting on the parcel, what will be the air parcel speed halfway between the low and the high? So I'll go ahead and encourage you to pause the video for a few seconds, uh, or pause the video and then take a few minutes and attempt to work that problem out. And then once you feel like you have an answer, then uh, go ahead and resume the video and you will see the solution worked out for you. So I'll give you a few seconds to pause the video. All right, so hopefully you got an answer, uh, and hopefully your worked out solution looks something like what you're about to see. And uh, well, let's just take a look at it. So again, a really good place to start when solving a problem like this is to draw a sort of a conceptual diagram to get an idea of what sort of answer to expect. So we have a low pressure system here, which is 1,005 millibars, and a high pressure system here, which is 1,015 millibars, separated by a difference of 500 kilometers. And what we're really interested in is what this air parcel speed is going to be halfway between the two systems. So it might also be useful to put that information on our diagram as well. And then we go to our equations of motion. If we want to model how something moves, then it would be uh, very sensible to use the equations of motion. And since the uh, since the only forces that we have the only force that we have to worry about is the pressure gradient force, we can immediately eliminate a lot of terms. Uh, from our equations of motion. So we can eliminate the momentum advection since we don't have to consider that. We can also eliminate this term over here. So we can eliminate this term over here, which is all the other forces. And we can also eliminate a lot more terms. So since our pressure gradient is only acting in the x direction or the zonal direction, we can eliminate the y component and we can eliminate the z component of the pressure gradient force as well, which means the parcel is not going to accelerate in the v in the Marial direction and it's not going to experience any accelerations in the vertical direction. The only thing that we have to worry about is the acceleration in the zonal direction or in the x component. And then we can also rewrite the left-hand side as just the acceleration in the x-direction. We can just use more of a conventional symbol to sort of represent that. So the acceleration in the x-direction is just equal to negative 1 over density times the pressure gradient that we are dealing with. So that's just the pressure gradient force term. And we can combine that with one of the kinematic equations that we might remember from uh, physics 1, I believe it is, Newtonian mechanics where this would be the particular kinematic equation that you would want to use since it does not involve time. We don't care about time, but it does involve initial velocity, final velocity, as well as acceleration and the displacement. And we know what u naught is, the initial velocity, because the parcel starts at rest, so u naught is just zero. And we can determine the acceleration from up here. We simply calculate what the pressure gradient force is, and that actually gives us the acceleration. And then also we know what the displacement is, 250 kilometers to the to the left or to the west. So we have enough information to determine what the final velocity should be at this halfway point. So if we go to calculate what that pressure gradient force is, which is our acceleration term up here, we get that this is one over the density, which is just one kilogram per meter cubed, times our differences in pressure. So 1,015 millibars minus 1,005 millibars, and then also divided by the distance between those two pressure systems. So the 500 kilometer distance that separates the low from the high. And uh, make sure that you're keeping track of your negative signs here because, or keeping track of your signs and make sure you're being consistent. So if you consider this to be the origin, so this is x equals zero and this is x equals 500 meters or 500 kilometers, then this 1015 millibar high also corresponds to an x value of 500 kilometers. So this is 1015 millibars at 500 kilometers minus 1,005 millibars at x equals zero kilometers. So if you get those mixed up, you might pick up a negative sign that you don't want. And then we will also go ahead and convert that into more conventional units. So we'll convert that into pascals. So there's 100 pascals in one millibar, and we can do that unit conversion uh, relatively simply. And again, since our air partial is initially at rest, the initial velocity is just zero. So if we take all the information and plug that into our kinematic equation up here, we get a result that looks like this. So we plug in the term for acceleration, which is just this mess here. So we get 
0 squared, since u0 is 0, minus 2 times the acceleration term, which works out to be 10,000 pascals over 500 meters times the density, and then also times our displacement, which is just 250 kilometers. Again, if you're thinking about this in terms of x coordinate, this is x equals 500 kilometers, and this is x equals two, uh, 250 kilometers. But we also have to make sure that this right-hand side is positive because we're going to take a square root of it. But if you work all that math out, you will get that uh, this term, this uf squared, this final velocity squared, is equal to 1,000 meters squared per second squared. So to get the final velocity, we just simply take the square root of that. So our final velocity is the square root of 1,000 meters per second squared. Now you may remember when you take the square root of something, you get two solutions. You get a positive solution and a negative solution. And this is where having the diagram becomes really helpful and also keeping in mind our meteorological convention for a coordinate system. Since the pressure gradient force is acting to the west, that means our wind at this halfway point is also going to be acting to the west. It's going to be moving from east to west, which by definition, if you remember our definition of zonal components, if you're moving from east to west, you in fact have a negative velocity because you're moving towards the west, which is the negative value of the zonal axis. So your final answer should be negative 31.6 meters per second at this halfway point. Again, that is 31.6 meters per second moving toward the west. So hopefully you arrived at that answer. Uh, if not, then it might be worthwhile to work through the problem again, but hopefully you got a final answer that looked like that. So, And that's going to do it for the second lecture. So with that, I will see you all in the next lecture.